Welcome to Brilliant Bankers. In today's session, we will be discussing about the derivative products. Herein, we will understand the meaning of derivatives, the various type of derivative products in the market, and its uses. So, to start off with, what is a derivative? Derivatives are like financial agreements that get their value from something else like that of the stocks, the interest rates or the commodity products. They are kind of like bets on how these things will change in the future like we do betting. So they are market products which is widely used in treasuries to manage the asset and liability management risk. They also cater the requirements of the corporate customers to hedge their trades and it is also used for the trading purpose, trading in a index or a exchange. Derivatives of financial instruments whose value is derived from an underlying asset which is like that of an index or a price or a rate. It does not have a separate independent value. They are essentially contracts between two parties that derive their value from the performance of an underlying asset or an index. Derivatives can be used for various purposes and they play a significant role in the financial markets. So to sum it up, it is a financial contract specifying an underlying which is a price or a rate or an index related to a financial product or a market based on a national amount and a specific payment provisions with clear settlement terms. So the derivatives are traded in two ways that is the over the counter and exchange traded products. So what are these over the counter and the exchange traded products? The two ways are the OTC and the exchange trade products. Products that can be directly taken from the bank or purchased or sold in the banks are the over counter products. For example, think of an OTC product like that of a direct deal between two parties, somewhat similar to a private transaction. It's like buying or selling something directly from someone else rather than going to a public marketplace or to a stock exchange. So over the counter products are the products that you directly purchase or sell in a bank or from a bank in the case of a treasury management. Example, imagine that you want to buy a rare collectible from a friend. There is no public auction or store for anything like that. So you negotiate directly with your friend for the price and make the deal. In the case of finance, OTC financial products are traded directly between two parties, that is of the central exchange. This includes things like the OTC stocks, the bonds and the derivatives. They are often customized to meet the specific needs of the parties that are involved in it. The exchange trade products, the ETPs, just think now, of the ETPs products like items you buy and sell on a public market such as a shopping mall. There are financial products that are traded on an organized exchange like that of the NSE and the BSE in the case of the finance. Other than that, if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you go to a store where many people buy and sell shoes. The price is determined by the market and anyone can buy or sell at that price. In finance or in the case of market banking, exchange traded products include things like the stocks, exchange traded funds and some derivatives. They are standardized and meaning everyone trades the same product and the prices are determined by the market supply and the demand. So it is a standardized derivative contract for a specified sum and for a specific period which is purchased and sold at an exchange is called a exchange traded derivative. Banks and treasuries, bank treasuries and the corporate customers mostly use the OTC products such as forward contracts, the options and the swaps. Norm and uh, normally this is what is happening 
with the bank treasuries and the corporate customers they they go for the otc products such as forward contracts options and swap so let's discuss what are the forward forwards forward contracts the options and the swaps the forward contract let's start it off with an example imagine you are a farmer growing rice you agree to a rice seller to sell 100 bags of rice for rupees 2000 each in 3 months so the agreement now taken is called a forward contract that is a contract with that seller that it will be sold in a period of 2 months in a future date so it is a forward contract it helps you to secure a price now even if the price of the price changes later so a forward contract is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a specified future date for a price that is already agreed upon today to reconfirm a contract to deliver a foreign currency we were taking the example of a farmer in the case of a bank or a treasury they are dealing with currencies so a contract to deliver foreign currency on a future date at a fixed exchange rate so this is what is called a forward contract it is an over the counter product of the bank or a treasury a forward contract it is always an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a specified future date for a price that is always agreed upon it is a type of derivative because it is a, its value is derived from an underlying asset it represents the interest rate differences of two currencies it is always either at a premium or at a discount or of the spot rate what is a premium or a discount for example today you are having something at a price of the us dollar to inr is 70 rupees you are already purchasing or you want to sell it after two months when you are purchasing after two months if you are buying for anything above the current date if it is 70 rupees today if you are buying it for rupees 80 after two months it is always at premium if you are buying at 69.95 paise 69 rupees 95 paise then it is called discount whenever the rate goes above that of the spot rate that is the day rate today it is called as premium and if it is below that today's rate it is called the spot rate sorry it's called the discount what are the key features of a forward contract the terms of the contract such as the price and the delivery date are negotiated between the two parties in this case generally an individual and the bank there is no intermediary in this case it's a private agreement typically traded over the counter meaning there is no intermediary like an exchange both parties are obligated to fulfill the terms of the contract on the agreed upon future date in simple terms a forward contract is like making a deal today to buy or sell something in the future at a price you agree upon now so what is an option options are financial instruments that give the holder the right it's not an obligation it's just the right to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price which is called the strike price before or at the expiration date so it refers to a contract where the buyer of the option has the right but not an obligation to exercise a contract that is if he wants to buy or sell a particular strike price a particular asset at a particular strike price there are two type of options they are the call options and the put options a call options gives a holder the right to buy an underlying asset at a specified price before or at the expiration date at the same time the put option gives the holder the right to sell an underlying asset at a specified price before or at the expiration date so the call option is is to buy and the put option is to sell an underlying asset at a specified price that is a strike price 
before or at the expiration date. An example for a call option will be you buy a call option for 100 shares of a company stock at a strike price of rupees 1000 per share. If the stock prices rise to rupees 1200, you can use this call option to buy the shares at the agreed upon at rupees 1000, making a profit. You are booking a call option for a particular share. What is the example of rupees 1000? Okay, let's go for sale share, which is one of the cheapest and uh, I think a good share. Let's assume that it is at 100 now. And you are taking a forward count, uh, option. You are going, uh, going for a call option of 120 for this month and expiry. If in case it is going to 120, you have an option to buy it at rupees 100. And the same thing is vice versa. Whenever you sell a call option, sorry, whenever you buy a put option, for 100 shares of a company and the stock at the uh, strike price of 800 per share if the stock goes rupees 700 you can use this put option to sell the shares at an agreed upon rate of rupees 800 avoiding a bigger loss this is how the call and the put works there are two types of options in the case of in the way of settlement and they are the American option and the European option. American options can be exercised at any time before or at the expiration date. Most top options traded in the US are of the American type. And the European options can be exercised at the expiration date only. Commonly used for index options and the options on the future contracts. So options in simple terms. Our options are like special agreements. When you buy an option, it is like getting a special agreement that gives you the right to buy or sell something that is like the stocks at a specific price. But you don't have to do it if you don't want to. The two types of options are the call options and the put options. To uh, give an example, you are buying a call option which is like having a coupon that allows you to buy something at a fixed price or agreed upon price and selling and put option is a is selling a promise you buy a put option which is like selling a promise it gives you the right to sell something at a fixed price there are some terms that are being used in options at all times that is atm itm and the otm atm what is atm it is at the money Imagine being right on target. If the stock price is right at the agreed upon price, it is called the at the money. It's like hitting the bullet. ITM in the money. Imagine being in the green. If the stock market price, price is going high up, then the agreed upon price for a call option or lower for a put option. In this case, it's in the in the money you are making a profit out of the money it's being out of luck if the stock price is lower than the agreed upon price for a call option or higher for a put option it is out of the money you are not making any profit yet there are two types of components in an option that's the intrinsic value and the time value the time value is also called the extrinsic extrinsic value what is the interesting value? It is like the real concrete value of the option. For a call option, it is the difference between the stock price and the agreed upon price. For the put option, it is the difference in the other way around. So, in the case of the call option, it is the difference between the stock price and the agreed upon price. What is the time value? Imagine that you are waiting for a bonus. It is like the extra value because there is still time left before the option expires. This bonus decreases as the option gets closer to the expiration date. It is like the total extra value of the option. So, extrinsic value includes both the time value and any additional value beyond that, that of a 
intrinsic value also to have a simple recap what are call options a special agreement to buy something at a fixed price what is a put option a special agreement to sell something at a fixed price what is atm right on the target in the money is always in the green making profit out of the money is out of luck not making any profit yet the intrinsic value is the real value based on the stock price the time value is the waiting bonus that there is still time left to hit a thing extrinsic value is also a name for the time value that is a total extra value that is including the time value so options are like tools that investors use to manage risk or make bets on the future moments of the market understanding these terms help you navigate the world of finance more confidently coming to futures so what are these futures coming to the same scenario of a farmer a farmer in india a farmer is worried about the fluctuating prices of his soya beans which they plan to harvest in the next 6 months so there is a solution for the farmer that he enters the futures market to lock in a price for their soya beans in advance ensuring they will get a fixed amount per unit at the time of delivery for that which he has to go through a pro process the farmer sells the soya bean futures contract on the commodity exchange this means they agree to deliver a specified quantity of soya beans at a predetermined price when the contract expires so what is the outcome of this if at the time of delivery the market price of the soya bean is higher than the agreed upon futures price the farmer is still obliged to sell at a lower price however if the market price of the soya bean is lower the farmer benefits because they have locked in a higher price to the futures contract so what is the definition how do you define a future future contracts are standardized financial agreements to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined price on a future date so these contracts are traded on the organized future exchanges so what are future exchanges a future exchange is a centralized place where standardized future contracts are bought and sold example in the case of india it's the nse and the bsc wherein futures are bought and sold standardized financial agreements to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined price on a future date they are traded on organized future exchanges all the contracts of the same type have a identical terms they also have centralized trading system which takes place on the exchange providing a central marketplace what are the other facilities of a futures it also works like a few, uh, forward contract but it is being dealt in a exchange it is a exchange trader product it is marked daily that is the rate or the price changes on a day to day basis and it is actively traded in the exchange that there are a lot of purchases and sales in the same product on a single day what it helps in the market transparency also because it's publicly available prices and the trading information helps the public in buying and selling of the futures on a day to day basis so how does this future trading works traders can go long or go short what is long and what is short that is long is expecting a price to rise or going short is expecting a price to fall the contracts have a specified expiration date leading to the settlement wherein the margin of the traders that is deposit a percentage of the contract value which will enable the control of a larger positions some of the examples of the futures traded on ex exchanges are the commodity futures wherein contracts for commodities like the gold oil wheat and soya beans are being sold in the case of the financial futures or the world of the financial futures contracts for the stock indices the interest rates and the currencies are being sold for energy futures energy commodities like the crude oil and the natural gas are being sold so what is the risk management in speculation these futures are used for risk management and speculation also which helps in the 
hedging of the trades. So participants use the futures for risk management. That is, tra traders use futures to profit from the anticipated market trends. What are the benefits of trading on a future exchange? It is a well-regulated environment with efficient price discovery and the liquidity due to its standardized contracts. Normally, the interest rate futures are very helpful in hedging the interest rate risk of a trader or a treasury. So, what are the different type of swaps? There are two types of swaps. One is an interest rate swap and the other is a currency swap. A interest rate swap it's like a financial derivative in which two parties agree to exchange the interest rate that is the cash flows over a specific period. These swaps are often used by businesses and investors to manage or optimize their exposure to the interest rate fluctuations. So why don't we break down the concept of the interest rate swap? They have a key components of the interest rate swaps as what are all the key components of the interest rate swaps? Two parties involved into an agreement. One party typically pays a fixed interest rate and the other pays a variable or a floating interest rate. The agreement terms are in a notional principle. That is, hypothetically, the amount on which the interest rate swap is based, it is not exchanged but used to calculate the interest payments only. What is a fixed rate? The agreed upon fixed interest rate that one party pays. And what is a variable rate? The variable interest rate is tied to a benchmark interest rate, like that of the LIBOR or the MIBOR. Internationally, it is the LIBOR is being used. And in India, it is the MIBOR, that is the Mumbai Interbank Offered Rate. So Indian, it is in India, it is we are using the MIBOR. And in uh, international terms, we are using the LIBOR, that is the London Interbank over rate. So, how interest rate swaps work? We will go with the example in which party A and party B. Mr. A pays a fixed interest rate and Mr. B pays a floating interest rate. So, the purpose of this is Mr. A might prefer stable payments while B might have a comfortable with variable rates. What happens here? Mr. A will have to pay a continuous, will have to pay an EMI or will be paying the same amount every month because the interest rate is stable. So, in the case of Mr. B, whenever there is a change in the interest rate, if the interest rate increases, Mr. B may have to pay an extra amount. If it decreases, he will be paying a lesser amount. So, cash flow exchanges. In this case, the Mr. A pays fixed interest to party. Mr. B pays a the floating interest. What are the benefits of this? Risk management. Entities can manage their exposure to in the interest rate risk and also in the cost optimization. Parties can benefit from lower borrowing costs or achieve a desired mix of fixed and floating rates. What is an interest rate swap outcome? In this case, they get more predictable payments and benefits from the variable rates, potentially saving on the interest costs. What are the risks that come in? The counterparty risk. The risk that one party may default on its obligations and parties often mitigate the, this risk through the credit assessments and the collateral agreements and also the market conditions, it may change in interest rates or credit spreads can affect the perceived value of the swaps. The termination also has a very big cost that swaps typically have a specified maturity, but they can be terminated earlier by mutual agreement or by trigger events. So, interest rate swaps provide a flexible tool for entities to manage their exposure to interest rate fluctuations that are achieved or through a desired cash flow structure and optimizing borrowing costs. They are widely used in the financial market by corporations, the financial institutions 
and investors seeking to customize their interest rate risk profiles. So, what is a country? Sorry, what is a currency swap? Currency swap is an exchange of currency flow in one currency with that of an another. That is a flow from one currency to an another currency. That is flow from Indian rupee to an US currency. Let's take an uh, example. Let's take an Indian company and a foreign company. Indian company A and the foreign company B. So, Indian company has a fixed rate loan in uh, Indian rupees. Whereas the foreign company B has a floating rate loan in their local currency. So, this is the way that they keep on changing it. Related to the repayment of the principal and or the interest under a loan obligation where the lender or the borrower intends to eliminate the risk. So, how are the risk being eliminated? It is by the way of repayment of the principal. How? It can be by the fixed rate or the floating rate interest of the currency loans. So, what is the principal only swap? or the POS. It is if a currency is hedged, it is called a principal only swap. It can uh, take it as a description. Both the Indian company and the foreign company agree to a principal only swap to exchange the principal payments on their loan. So, how does that work? The Indian company will pay the principal amount of the foreign company's loan in INR and foreign company will pay the principal of the Indian company's loan in their local currency. And what is the use cause of this? This allows both companies to manage the exposure to changes in the principal amounts of their loans without affecting the interest payments. And there is another option that is a coupon only swap. Both the Indian company and the foreign company here agrees to a coupon only swap to exchange the interest payments on their loans. And again, the same cost. The Indian company will pay the interest of the foreign company's loan in INR and the foreign company will pay the interest of the Indian company's loan in the local currency. And there is a third type of swap that is a P plus 1 swap. To explain this, the Indian company and the foreign company who agree for, for a principal plus 1 swap to exchange the principal amount of their loans along with that of the additional fixed amounts. So, how does this one work? The ICA or the Indian company will pay the principal amount of the foreign company's loan in INR and an extra fixed amount and the foreign company will pay the principal amount of the Indian company's loan in their local currency. So, this type of swaps help both companies manage their currency risk while also providing an additional fixed payment, potentially serving as a compensation for the currency risk taken on by one of the parties. So, currency swaps are financial agreements in whole between two parties to exchange the cash flows denominated in different currencies over a specified period. These swaps are commonly used by multinational corporations and the financial institutions to manage currency risk, obtain lower financing costs and optimize their financial structures and in these type of swaps in both the currency swap and the currency swap and the interest rate swap it helps both the companies being it an indian company or a foreign company to manage various aspects of their debt including interest rate risk principal exposure and currency risk. So, swaps provide a flexibility for entities operating in multiple currencies to tailor their risk, manage their strategies as per their needs. So, with that, we come to an end of today's session and we have discussed about the derivative products, over-the-counter and exchange traded products, about forwards, options, futures and the types of options and what are the different type of swaps in the market, the interest rate swap and the currency swap. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below.
we are awaiting your feedback in our comment section do not forget to subscribe to our channel the brilliant bankers do like share and subscribe to each and every banker for do like share and subscribe jai hind